Formulas are a great way to establish rules that can be followed with a repeating pattern. Formulas are really common in a lot of math applications as well as in tons of science classes that you might be taking in the future. Um, so let's learn a little bit of math about the concept of how evaluating formulas works. Let's suppose that we have a formula that looks like this. 3x squared minus x plus 1. And we want to figure out what this value represents when x is equal to 2. Okay, well, what this means when we're looking at a formula, if this is our rule, Every time that we see an x, we're going to replace it with the number that we see over here. So let's try that. I have 3 times 2 instead of the x squared, so the x value or the 2 got squared, minus my x value is 2 plus 1. Okay, so if we have something like this, we can go ahead now and just follow the order of operations to evaluate it. 2 squared is equal to 4. And then we copy everything else exactly the way that we see it. So I have 3 times 4 minus 2 plus 1. Uh, after we've done that, we move on to multiplication and division. We have one multiplication here that we can do. 3 times 4 is 12. Everything else stays the same. And then we can work on uh, addition and subtraction from left to right. The first one we see here is our subtraction, 12 minus 2. Uh, you can make that 12 plus a negative 2 using our subtraction rules. Change the minus to a plus, change the sign of the number that comes next. And 12 plus negative 2, of course, is 10. That 12 minus 2 was a familiar. You can jump straight to the 10 there. I just wanted to remind you that these rules for subtraction always work and um, so that we can move forward. Here then we end up with 10 plus 1 after we do that, and 10 plus 1 will give me my final solution of 11. So that's going to be my formula value, or my formula evaluated when x is equal to 2. One of the things, notice that I did here, which is very good, uh, a very good thing to do, is I put the values that I was substituting into parentheses. It may not have seemed like a very big deal here, and it might be natural to leave those off, but when we're dealing with problems that have uh, positive and negative numbers in particular, or even fractions, it's very helpful for us to have those uh, expressions all written uh, in parentheses. It keeps us out of some trouble. Let's try the same example again here using the 3x squared minus x plus 1, but instead of doing this when x equals 2, Let's do this when x equals negative 3. Okay, so same concept. Anywhere we see an x, we're going to stop and replace this. So here I'm going to have 3 times. Instead of x, I'm going to use negative 3 now to the second power. Minus, instead of x, I'm going to use negative 3 plus 1. As we start out, the first thing again, uh, inside the parentheses are just numbers, nothing to do, so we're going to go into using um, exponents, which is the next on our PEMDAS list. Here I have negative 3 squared. If you recall, we're squaring all of that x, so all of negative 3 to square it means you multiply it by itself. Negative 3 times negative 3 our signs are the same, so it ends up being a positive number, and 3 times 3 is 9. So I can replace the negative 3 squared with 9. The 3 that's outside here is uh, being multiplied by the parentheses. That's always implied if it's not written. So here, 3 times, instead of negative 3 squared, I've got 9, minus negative 3 plus 1. Again, continuing on our order of operations, uh, the next thing you want to do is multiplication and division. 3 times 9 gives me 27, minus negative 3 plus 1. Now I'm just to addition and subtraction. I do whatever comes first. They have the same priority, whatever comes first, less left to right. So I'm going to actually do the subtraction first. 
When you go to do the subtraction, remember we're going to change it to an addition problem. We don't have subtraction rules, only addition rules. Uh, and then we change the sign of the number that comes after. So the negative 3 is going to become a positive 3. So all I've done, done here is rewritten this so that I can actually go ahead and add these. Here I've got 27 plus 3, same signs, all positive, no biggie. Uh, add those to get 30, and then I can add at the very end that last one to get my final solution. Okay, uh, let's do maybe another another statement. Um, we can have as many variables as we want or need in our different problems. Let's suppose that we have something like this. Um, three x minus two y plus five x minus y squared. This time I have two variables in my formula and so if I want to evaluate it, and again remember evaluate is when we plug different values in for each of the for each of our variables. Let's evaluate this when x is equal to um, one half and y is equal to two thirds. It's nothing that says that our values need to be uh, regular nice integers. Um, they're perfectly valid to have uh, fractions. So this will let us review some of our fraction rules as well. So let's go ahead and plug our values in here. I'm going to start with 3. Instead of x, I'm going to put in 1 half. Minus 2. Instead of y, I'm going to put in 2 thirds. Plus 5. And then in parentheses, it's x minus y. So my x is 1 half. Minus y was 2 thirds squared. All right, so looks like a pretty big little collection of things that we need to work on. Uh, where do we start? Well, first thing in order of operations says we start with parentheses. And we do have a set of parentheses here that has the uh, first thing that we'll need to accomplish. In this case, I'm doing 1 half minus 2 thirds. This is a subtraction with fractions. I need a common denominator. Between 2 and 3, uh, 6 works great. And so let's, off to the side here, let's take a look at what this expression is going to look like with 6 as my common denominator. To get from 2 to 6, I'd have to times the bottom by 3. So I'm going to have to also times the top by 3 here. 2 times 3 gives me 6. 1 times 3 gives me 3. 1 half and 3 6 are equivalent fractions. Now I'm going to have to change the next fraction. It had a denominator of 3. I need it to be 6. I can get that by timesing by 2. So I also have to times the numerator by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and this becomes my top value. Now that I'm doing subtraction, I can, can go ahead and approach that, and I subtract the tops and keep the bottom the same. However, notice if I do 3 minus 4, I don't have enough to be able to subtract that. So we're going to have to incorporate our positive and negative rules here. Uh, we can change subtraction to addition, and then we can change the sign of the number that comes next. Once we've done this, 6 is our common denominator. We worked hard for it, so let's not change it. And then on the top, when we do 3 plus a negative 4, signs are different, so I'm going to subtract, and I end up with one more on the negative side, so I have negative one six. Now I can rewrite my problem over here. Three times one half minus two times two thirds plus five times negative one sixth squared. And I've taken care of all of the operations that are inside parentheses. The next thing that I need to do then is any exponents that I see. In this case, I have negative one sixth squared. Remember that squaring something means you multiply it by itself. In this case, what was inside here says that I have to multiply negative one-sixth by itself. So let's do that over here. Negative one-sixth times negative one-sixth. Negative times a negative is a positive because our signs are the same. Then we multiply across the top and the bottom. One times one is one. Six times six is 36. And I have a new value here. Now let's go through and do this. 3 times 1 half minus 2 times 2 thirds plus 5 
times positive 1 over 36. All right. Now, when I go to look at the problem, I've done all the parentheses, I've done all the exponents, now I'm ready to do multiplications. I do have several multiplications that I can do here from left to right. The first one that I see is 3 times 1 half. Now, this 1 half is a fraction, but the 3 is not. And if we're multiplying, we need to multiply across the top and the bottom. Don't forget that you can always write any number as a fraction by putting it over 1. So this 3 times 1 half is the same as 3 over 1 times 1 half. To do that, I can just multiply across the top and across the bottom. Across the top, 3 times 1 gives me 3 halves. Across the bottom, 1 times 2 gives me 2. Okay, then I'm going to subtract, and now here I've got another multiplication. Let's go ahead and do that. The same concept is going to apply. I want to multiply and get a fraction, so I need to make the 2 a fraction, and I can put that over 1. Multiplying across the top, 2 times 2 is 4. Multiplying across the bottom, 1 times 3 is 3. All right, plus, and I've got yet another multiplication now that I can do. So let's go ahead and do that. This is 5 over 1 times 1 over 36. Multiply across the top and across the bottom, and I end up with 5 over 36. So I've gotten past my um, multiplication and division step, and now I'm on just addition and subtraction. For here, we're going to do things from left to right. So let's start here. Between 2 and 3, we can get a common denominator of 6. Let's change our values on the top here. Uh, to get from 2 to 6, I'd have to times by 3, so I times the top by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. To get from 3 to 6, on the bottom here, I times by 2, so I times the top by 2. Then I have 9 6 minus 8 6, which gives me 1 6. Subtract the top, 9 minus 8 is 1, keep the common denominator the same. Now that I've done that first subtraction, now I can do this final addition to finish my problem. Uh, I have 6 and 36, um, and I need a common denominator. 6 does go into 36, though, so I can go ahead and use 36 as my common denominator. For the first fraction, to get from 6 to 36, I'd have to times by 6, so I times the top by 6. 1 times 6 is 6. The second fraction already had a denominator of 36, so I can keep it the same as 5. And now that I have a common denominator, I can go ahead and add my values. Uh, the common denominator stays the same, and then I can add the tops. 6 plus 5 is 11, and I come up with 11 36. Do take a second and see if you can reduce the answer. In this case, 11 does not go into 36, and I can't break those down anymore. So this is my final simplified solution. Uh, the, the more fractions and positives and negatives you have, the more little calculations you need to do. But as long as you take your time and just do one thing at a time, we can make it through those problems and get to the final simplified solution.